What happened the first time you auditioned for the Actors Studio? First time I was rejected. Uh, and I was a young man and a teenager. And I went in there because the Actors Studio was the place we all aspired to, especially the one in New York. We hadn't, we didn't have a West Coast um, Actors Studio. Uh, it's, it came over years because a lot of the actors in it had to come out here and make films. Yeah. But but the the, um, uh, the 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 studio sent me an encouraging note. I said, "Why don't you try again one day?" Oh, so they said no. But they said no, but, but don't give up. Don't give up. Right. Said, don't give up the ship, kid. We'll see you again one day. And indeed, I I came back and I did audition. And you get in. I got into my first audition. They they passed me for some reason. As far as I was concerned, I didn't. And then they said, come back for another. And I've, I've often, that's what they usually do. They say, and then sometimes you go to a third time. And, and, and that's called the final audition. And at that audition, they had the, the, the brass of the actor's studio, whether Lee Strasberg, Kazan, these kind of people were there, about half a dozen. And they would, they would uh, pass you or they would, they would make the decision as to whether you were going to be a member or not. And so uh, I remember that last audition, I was about 25, I think, which is relatively young for the actor's studio. And, and uh, a friend of mine, a fellow named Nathan Joseph, never forget him, as Israeli guy. And he, uh, he was this wonderful talent. You know, he was, I was in a play with him. Off, 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 off Broadway, <laughs> and and he, he had a scene from a, a play called uh, "Look, We've Come Through," um, a U Wheeler play, and another play I was doing was something from um, oh I forget one of those. Paul Muni was in that play at one point. I had an advantage because they were opposite characters. So when I when I did the audition, I did my audition was uh, from this the angry play where I play a communist uh, rebel, and and uh, the other play was playing a sort of gay, kind of um, a, a a young teenage a young a young guy who's a, who's a, a hooker a gay hooker, in 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 a in a wonderful play called Look We've Come Through. And I had it with Nathan. He, that was his audition. And my audition was with my friend Owen at the time. So they got to see me. And Nathan had made it up till the final auditions, too. So that night, I went in and did two scenes there, which is very rare that you have two finalists. And it wasn't planned. It just happened. And, and I was fortunate because they got to see me in two different kinds of characters, which I thought has always been a thing with actors, you know, you see, oh, well, he just does that, or he does that. So I was lucky enough to get them to see, uh, see the two sides of me. Do you find out whether you made it right then? No, you don't. Uh, um, uh, uh, I remember being a young wise ass going down there after I finished, and the, there's the secretary was in the office downstairs. Because you have, you go through this, you know, this, you know, my thing that I, I show you in the film. I did a, this mini film about the actor's studio and you sit in this little place at the bottom of the stairs and you walk up like we just did here and you walk all the way up and then you, you I mean, you're really scared down there. And you know, in that room are the, the judges and, and, and you go in and you, they announce your name and you go in and you do your scene. At the at the renowned actor's studio, and so I, I I I would go there. And when I left after the audition, I skipped down the stairs. I was I was pretending, of course, I was trying to. And I said, and 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 they said, how did it go? And I said to the secretary, I'll be hearing from you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was so I had such a uh, I don't know. Sometimes I wish I had some of that left, but it was interesting because it, uh, it, it... But you weren't faking it. You were, you, were, you were confident. You thought you'd done well. Well, 
I, I, I sort of doubled up on it. Yeah, I thought I'd, I did well. I thought I had the two scenes, and it gave me a little bit of... Uh, and then the next day, they, they tell you, you know, they call you and said you've been accepted. <laughs> that was just, I mean, <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I was, it was a lifesaver. Because actors, you know, I mean, it, 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 you, 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 you rarely get, you rarely pass any auditions. And I, and what I always tell young actors, or if I'm speaking to them, I usually have, you know, seminars where I talk to young actors. I say, please, whatever you do, uh, don't, don't expect to get the part ever. It's just not out of the, you know, it's out of the question. But try to do the audition the audience, because they they are your audience, because actors don't have audiences. Uh, you, know, you don't have, you can do it on a park bench, and some people are laying around, you start acting for them, which uh, you need an audience. You need a way to get it, get it out, and to use that as another, another lesson of how you, it, I would go to an audition, I would say to the people auditioning, you know, uh, to people who are auditioning me, I would say, if you don't mind, I, I, I like your script, it's, it's very good, but can I, I, I've prepared a little something. And immediately you're finished, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, look, they look at you like, who is he? You know, and then you go in there and you do your thing. And so anyway, I was accepted and uh, it made me feel for the first time in my life, and I had been acting a good deal of my young life. I, I, in school, I was an actor, I started early. I really felt that I, uh, I had become an act. I was sanctioned. I, I, I would, I got the seal. I, hey, yes, I graduated. I, I'm an, I'm a, you know, I'm a college grad, or I'm an actor. I'm really an actor. I, I've never gotten a dime for it, but I'm still a professional actor somehow. Did it mean something to your folks when you, when you got in? Well, I didn't have folks then. I had oh. lost my father. My father never had a father, but my grandmother was alive. And my grandmother and grandfather raised me, so she was alive, and I don't think she quite uh, understood the impact of it. Uh, but I did tell her in any event. I told a couple of friends, and, it, it, and especially my close friend, Charlie Lawton at the time. Not the Charles Lawton, but Charlie Lawton, who was my dear friend and mentor. And I told him that I got in, and he was really happy for it. It was just because um, we had... I had studied with him. He was an acting teacher. And I had never studied with Lee Strasberg or anybody at this studio. And then they took me in. And uh, I was too sort of shy to do a scene for the first six months. So I would just sit in the class. So that guy who skipped down the stairs and told the, the receptionist that you're going to be yeah. calling me tonight, yeah. Yeah. that guy was too shy to do yeah, a scene? he was there. acting. <laughs> that guy was yeah. acting. But it was a way of, you know, just dealing with the kind of thing where, you know, the actor is always having to audition or go through a thing. And it was my way of, uh, how could you say it? It was my way of being on top of it. You know, I mean, you start to feel kind of, but I, 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 I did come off there. I joked around a lot. That was, that was a joke to me. But I, I, I felt I had done something. So... When you're here in this theater, yeah. you know, at the Actors Studio West, yeah. what does this, uh, you know, what, what kind of memories does this conjure up for you? Well, this is the West. I, I didn't work much here. I come here when I can. Uh, I usually worked out of New York and stuff. But what it, well, like I said to you earlier, I was in this uh, environment. The last time I was in this environment, because uh, it's a small theater, and there's, there's, you'll probably show it later. There's a little, it's almost like, the old saying, ha ha having a plank and a passion, you know, that's what you need, a plank and a passion, and that's a plank, and if you have a passion, you go up there and do Shakespeare. But, but I remember in the off, off, off Broadway houses that I used to work in, I was in a, in a, in a play. And they were, they, those, those were small theaters like small this one. Small theaters just like this one, and there were the seats right in front of us, you know, with us, and I remember lighting up a cigarette, no, I was looking for a light. I had uh, an ashtray, but I, I didn't have a light. And some woman in the audience just reached in and lit the cigarette for me. I didn't have a, light, a cigarette as the character, and then she lit it as the audience. So 
it was uh, it was inter in, we inter interplayed. Um, so you said uh, in that film, you said something that you were just referred to here. Hmm. You said the the best thing the best thing an actor can do is a role in a place in a theater in front of an audience. Yeah, I think I I, I think. When you're a young actor and you're starting out, to me, it, 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 it's about having a partner you do a scene with and you do it together, you rehearse it, and then you do it in front of an audience. And if you do it enough, you start to learn a little bit. I mean, sometimes there's instructors there to help you, guide you a little bit. But it is the action. Action is what counts. And as you're not talking about learning the lines. That's part of it. Yeah, so what, that's what, part of it. So what is it? What is the thing that you learn? You learn, like anything else, like you say, how to get to Carnegie Hall, practice. You get to Carnegie, Carnegie Hall, you can't just walk in and just do it. If you're a you know, first violinist, you have to have a lot of practice. So the same thing with the actor. You, you have to have a, there's one thing to have the desire, which is the most important thing to feel the energy and the desire to do this thing, the appetite to do it. Appetite's very important because you, as you get to be an older actor, you start to lose the appetite. Is it, you get dreary and all the other things that happen to you. I, the first scene I did at the actor's studio was, uh, I did two monologues. I, I was very shy, so it took me, as I say, six months to get up there and do something. But from years of practice, I had a, a, a soliloquy from, uh, from uh, uh, Hamlet, which was a play I just constantly read, and the other was from The Iceman Cometh, Eugene O'Neill's Iceman Cometh. And I did both of them. And uh, 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 Lee Strasberg was the moderator, so it was packed. And uh, he hadn't known me yet. I remember the one thing I, I will never forget is he looked at the card and he saw on the card a guy named Al Pacino. Nobody ever called me Al Pacino because P-A-C-I-N-O is a silent C-H and nobody knows that unless you know the language. You say Pacini and school. When I went to school, they'd always be saying Pacuni, Pacani. Yeah, I, I, I would have said Pacino. Pacino, yeah. yeah. Right. No, no. Pacino, and he pronounced it right. So I said, he's got my heart. <laughs> so. So I, I, I did the both of them, and then he said, he said a particularly great actor studio thing. He looked at me in the audience, and he said, all right, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do Hamlet as you were doing Hickey, and I want you to do Hickey as Hamlet. I just went right into it. I heard it, you know. And it was an amazing thing, what he said, because it was so interesting that exercise right away, how everything changed. And you get a perspective, and that's sort of what acting is. You find that out usually through work and, and uh, engagements with it. And, yeah. So in that area, uh, Ellen Burstyn said when I asked her how, I might have said method acting, but I might have said the actor studio. Yes. How did the actor studio change the movie business, the theater? And she said, it, it, everything. It changed everything from before and after. Well, I could tell you, uh, the 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 uh, actor studio is is and 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 the kind of acting there is you're always trying to find a way to somehow. The Stra uh, Strasberg did it, Stanislavski, the great teacher, did it. He learned from the great actors at the time, the great stage actors at the time. And, and what it is for, for me is, is to uh, be, be able to, uh, uh, if you find, it, you go through various transformations as, as an artist, as an actor. You, 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 you keep doing it and you learn about yourself. The more roles you do, the more you learn about yourself, and so the, what what works for you, what you feel comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. See, 
This is why uh, Lee Strasberg would say, you know, I'm not that interested in what you do well. I'm interested in the roles you have difficult time with, because that's where technique is learned. So there's a there's a story gets repeated, gets repeated on on Turner Classic Movies, gets repeated by a lot of actors, and and certainly in New York too. That that there was the theater before yes. your friend Marlon Brando and the streetcar named desire and yes. there were movies before your friend marlon brando and the streetcar named desire and That's right. his performance changed everything well it did it changed everything again he was uh um yeah, i would say he was the closest that i've ever seen to a genius an acting genius that i've seen i've seen great uh performances and i remember i was uh, i was a kid now i had no idea so I was doing a play in junior high school, and I remember coming after the play, and uh, and and this uh, this guy came over to me, you know, an adult, and he said, "Hey, kid." So I turned to him. He says, "You're going to be the next Marlon Brando," and I said, "Who's Marlon Brando?" <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Never forgot it. But what happens if you see? The, 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 the combination of things with actors sometimes who get the role and the role in the, uh, and, 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 and the play, and if you take Streetcar, you take Kazan as the director, you take Tennessee Williams as the writer, you put them all together. And when you, you take one scene in Streetcar, just take it out of context, when he's playing cards and, and Brando's playing cards and you could tell he's not winning they were a bunch of guys that poker. And the two women, uh, Blanche and uh, Marlon's wife, are in the, Kim Hunter and Vivian Lee are in the other room dancing and cause, making noise because it's a small place in Louisiana. And he's, and he's getting upset. He's got a hat and he's got his T-shirt on. And, and you could feel him, the sweat and everything else. And, and then he, you, see, you see him, he, he's annoyed with them. He keeps calling. Then he, he seems to get a relatively good hand. You can feel him. He's got a good hand. And, and, and he has that look on his face when he puts it down. And he puts the hand down. And the other guy he's playing just goes, oh, and throws down another hand. And you see it happen to Marlon. You see it go right through him. Now, this is a performance he did on the stage for many months. So he had acquired all that stuff inside him. He, he understood the language and everything that goes with the emotions. It was inside him it, it, that he didn't have to act, is the point. So when he did it, and he, 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 you could see him get mad at the guy, because you see that. It's, it's different when it's on Broadway and you could, you're at distance. But when you're there, you see the eyes go. You see the transition from knowing that he was going to win to knowing that he lost, and then the way he was aggravated with them in the other room, who are just I'm saying all these things to him, uh, they're playing music and making a racket, and that's probably why he lost the game or whatever, how he computes it. He gets up and run, goes, he just gets up and grabs the radio that the, the mu music is on. He throws it, I think, through the window. He gets up and turns over the table. He's now, they grab him, they put him in the shower, and then they, and then it winds up at the end of it, him going up there to the, you know, looking up to, to the, to the balcony saying, Stella, you know, remember that scene? <laughs> yes, well, yeah. if you <laughs> isolate it, just watch it. You will not see an actor. You will see a tornado. You are in touch with nature when you see it. Now that takes the concept of the writer certainly takes Elia Kazan's great direction, how he orchestrates it, and then Marlon's gifts. Also, the fact that Marlon was in the zone because he had done it on stage and practiced it many and many a night. And then he adjusted to cinema. That was the big adjustment. So when you get asked then, because look, man, one of the things he hears is that non-actors who love the movies, who love the theater. They don't quite understand what happens here or what you do. And they have these maybe preconceived notions about what method acting is. Yeah. That's, so tell them what it is. Everybody has a method. We have a method right now when we talk. I, a, a method has to do with, uh, I think, I'm, 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 
I, I am one who has to do experience. I can only give you examples. I, I can't think of what it is because when I approach acting, I approach the role and I approach the writer of the role and how I can consume it and bring it to my unconscious. I think, but at the bottom line, the actor's studio purports toward the personal. So things that happen are personal. I only can say that a play called American Buffalo, and I did it for a long time, on and off for four years. At one point in the play, I was doing the play and it was uh, okay, it was received all, all right, and I was playing it and it, it was a play that I loved. It was one of David Mamet's yeah. great, greatest plays. And, and so I became um, um, involved with it and by doing it, I did it in Connecticut. I came back, I did it off Broadway for the longest time. We even went to Broadway, I did it. Finally, I did it in London. And then I came back here and did it in Washington. I did it in Boston. See what I mean? The traveling and stuff. Now, by the time I did it in Boston, I had done it on and off for four years. Now, I'm on the stage in the play. I'm playing it with my partners, and we're all together, and we're working. And I realized after about five minutes, I hadn't moved. I had not moved. I was just there. And in, and in previous performances? Exactly. Part of the, even some of the, the uh, um, evaluations or criticisms of it was that, wow, look at him. He moves like a, you know, I mean, they were positive, but it was, I mean, he moves yeah, like, like a, a panther and there he is like that. And all that, I didn't have to do it anymore. Why? I got tired? <laughs> no. No, it, it was because I had done it so much. When you go to a game, whether it's football, baseball, you go to a baseball game, the guy hits the ball, the guy catches it, he throws it first. It's so fast, but it's done with economy. They never move extra, if you notice, because they played it their whole lives. So they, 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 there's the economy comes with uh, practice. So. But like, okay, I'll go to one of your, let's go to the, a couple of big movies then. Like, yeah. The Godfather, when you come in, you play that role, you are a, were you in the studio yet? I was in the studio, yeah. I was. So you're in the actor's studio, but you've done like two other movies, right? Uh, I think. Actually, one. I, the other one, me and Natalie, I had a bit part in. So only one. One real movie. One, yeah. Only one real movie before yeah. The Godfather. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing like American Buffalo. You don't have. 3,000 performances to fall back on to know no. to be still. Mm -hmm. So how does this place, how does the actor's studio help you in a movie like The Godfather when you got no experience? Well, all I can tell you is what, 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 what you're doing Shakespeare. You do, like Peter Brook told me, the great director, Peter Brook, who directed uh, all kinds of great things, had his own theater company. He told me in my film, Looking for Richard, he says, what you can do in the theater with Shakespeare. See, in the theater, usually you're, that's why the pacing was and everything was, you're, 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 you're projecting because you have to reach the balcony. So you, it, it changes your technique, it changes the way you approach things. You have, to, you have to use your voice to a certain degree. But in the movies, you're working here. You're working in this frame. And so what you're doing in the frame is basically you, you're, you're adjusting to, you're conforming to the, to the frame. And that's instinctive. Every time I go on stage, I want to hear things for the first time. And I never do. I always am thinking of the line the person's going to say. And then once in a while, it changes because I have other things to attach myself to. You understand? You're thinking about other things. So the words come in. So how does this place, how did the actor's studio help you in those moments? Well, it, it helped me basically because uh, I was allowed to listen to what the critiques were of, of people doing things. I was learning by seeing what mistakes I made, what, what mistakes, obvious things. But to me, I'm a, I, I don't, um, they, they, there are exercises they do, there are ways of looking at a scene. Uh, I, I, I just learn from doing, that's my, but the, you see, you have to understand something about the actor's studio. 
everybody in it. They, there's not one way of doing it. There's, a, there's, there's no rules, in a sense, because rules are going to change all the time. It's going to change how you feel that day, what play you're doing. It's a different play than the other play you did. So there's a new, a new way of looking. It's a new painting. So you, 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 are, you are told sometimes at the studio, you're told things that you, you might not have, you know, like Lee Strasberg once told me, yeah, you're waking up. Are you waking up? You're just waking up. Was that waking up? I said, oh, you can't experiment as much as you can here. And all kinds. It's Ellen, Ellen Burstyn says to you how, what, how she perceives the method, how she perceives the work in that class. I'm sure Harvey Keitel would tell you something different. Paul Newman would tell you something. I, I'm telling you something now. It's different. Everybody has their own approach to things, and they all can do it here. Why is it important for an actor to, to free their unconscious? Oh, I think a lot of things happen in the unconscious. I played a role, if I may. I, you may. Yeah. I'm not with anybody else here, so I can talk all I want. You know what I mean? I'm not... I played a role, and, I'm, and I played a salesman, and I was doing this role for a while, and uh, I found myself uh, in, in, in the middle of a scene dancing. I was just dancing to something, and I do it a couple of times during the play, uh, dancing. And I thought, what is that? After I finished the play, I'm walking and I'm thinking, oh man, my father was a dancer, and he was a salesman. That's what I mean by unconscious. So you didn't plan on it? I didn't plan on it. It happened. Where did it come from? I don't know. It was there. I know it came from somewhere back there. You know? and, and, and it's all about keeping yourself, your, your, your instrument free. When you say your instrument, what does that mean? To, that to, means to the us. whole gestalt, man. Everything. <laughs> the whole gestalt. The brains, the body, the heart, the mind, <laughs> everything. And, and that's what is, uh, is the way. You know, you, you try to do what Michelangelo said when he said, you know, Lord, free me of myself that I may please you. You want to get freed of the ego and all the things that come with us and, and, and find a way to... Uh, Express the character you're playing or your perception of what the character is because everybody does it differently, you know. I saw recently, after 25 years, I saw The Godfather, Godfather 1. I haven't seen it. Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> it really worked. It really worked. But I saw it and I thought at the end of it, uh, uh, I, I saw this person emerge, right? And, and, and then I thought, oh man, I went and did another one. I did Godfather 2 after, after that. So I took that where I was and did a whole three hour, another three, hour, three hour movie going through that. So, you know, you say to yourself, I said to myself, how did I do that? You know, I was younger, I was different, I was a different kind of person, of course, but uh, to me that, that was, that was a, something that had that person had gone through, whether it was destiny or whatever it was, he had to change his trajectory in life to deal with his family problem. And, and, that, and that turned him into what he was at the end of the film and what he is through the Godfather 2. And when they made Godfather 3, I think now what I, 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 I wish I had this thought, well, it's it's it, it for me. It was it was more Godfather three, and I didn't do it. I, I I didn't succeed in in doing that. But I would have if I could only have been me now. I would have said, this man is in stone, he's encased, and he really wants to get free of it. You know. So so. But I, you don't think I, you did that? I don't think I did it because it was sort of, a, it was a bit complex in the sense that it, it, it was about redemption and, and, and redeeming. And, but it was, I, I thought it would have been closer for me now if I, if I was looking for a way to break out of that thing that I had 
where I had come to as, 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 as Michael, where he had come to. So as you've gotten more experienced, as you've gotten older, it's easier for you to take off the coat of the character you're playing. Easier, yeah. yeah. I, I think sometimes I have to. Sometimes it's better if you're doing a dark scene. And sometimes it's better for you in the scene itself if you have a happy day. Because that's in us. All those things are in us. All of us. We all have all these things in us. And actor has to act. Something. That's why they used to call the actor an emotional athlete. We're an emotional athlete. So those emotions are in us. We, that's why actors can be sometimes, like I'm being now, a bit effusive and, and you try to get it out and talk fast because we, we, are, we are the uh, sort of um, oh, the chroniclers of our time. We are expressing what uh, people who don't do this sometimes want to express and yeah. feel. That's why they identify with that. When they're in roles, 